There it is. Okay. Record.
Hey, did y'all get in? Okay, I used the old link for the funeral that he sent out the other day, and I'm in. Okay. Emit. Okay, I'll send it. All right, I'll send it right now. Bye. Yeah. 
for sinners and the happiness of your saints. Give, we pray, to your servant Dedicosa, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of Mary. I share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. reading from the Book of Wisdom. Brothers and sisters, the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passings away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if, for if before men, indeed, they be punished. Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them, and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnish, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through smoke. They shall judge nations, and rule over people, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall apply with him to harm. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. Of the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thanks be to God. separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. But then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? The king will say to them and reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them. Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones you did not do for me. And these will go on to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most loving and gracious God, this morning we ask you to send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, into our minds, to open them to the word of your Son. And then to give us the strength to understand that word and to live that word, to put it into action. And Father, I ask you now to send me that same Holy Spirit that I too may preach as you want me to preach. 
And we ask this through Christ our Lord. I can tell you, you used to be on the stage and not in a technical part of production. <laughs> I have producers. So give it after the example of your father. But if I was standing at the altar waiting for you to do whatever you were doing over there, because I have no idea what you were doing, uh, nor do I want to know what you were doing. But memories started popping back in my head like crazy. Uh, 41 years ago, when I arrived in this parish as pastor, some of the first people that I met was me and Sally Olson, along with Father Ray's parents, along with Stephanie Morales, and a few others. And I can tell you that I would have been lost if it hadn't been for them. As I reflect upon the liturgy of the Word today, there are readings that truly reflect what it is to live the life that we receive in baptism. But your father, your mother, and your father in particular, I don't think I ever heard him get up and actually preach or talk about the word of God, but I definitely saw him live that word. And that's what Jesus asked us to do, to take his word to our heart and then to live our lives according to that word. And the first reading from the Book of Wisdom, the author tells us it's only in the eyes of the foolish that the dead appear to be dead, for they are alive. And we know that is true because when Jesus told us that we receive the sacrament of baptism, we become part of his body part of him. We become one with him. He becomes one with us. This is the Jesus who died on the cross for us and rose again, who is very much alive today. And so it is with us. When we die, it's kind of like moving from one location to the next. But you probably would never be by Water Street, but now he has a better address to call his own. And that's what happens to us. If we live our lives according to that word that God has given to us. The reading also of wisdom talks about the sparks flying around on a fire. I remember when I was young, and that was a long time ago, going camping with my father. And you build a fire outside at night, and you put more wood, and the sparks are flying everywhere. The wisdom author mentions that today. And to me, that's kind of like the spirit of each one of us when we die and receive eternal life are celebrating and jumping with joy at those sparks flying around for we are in the presence of the living God. And then St. Paul, the second reading today, speaks to us about being children of God. And your father certainly was a child of God. Your mother claims that when he made his crucium, that he had a conversion in life. But you know, that's what we are about right now in Lent, a conversion in life. To leave behind the old way and to take on the new. To realize that in God we do indeed have a father and that we are his adopted sons and daughters. And we live in him. And there's a certain freedom to that. When your father turned from his old ways, whatever they were, and began to live the life fully of Christ, it changed him. Now, I only knew him after that. But the change must have been tremendous because he's definitely reflected the word of God in what he did. I can tell you that my experience here in the Lady Guadalupe, from your parents, Mother Ray's parents, and the others, that it kind of shaped my ministry here in the United States. And God knows I made enough mistakes in those 10 years that I was here. 
but I also found people like your father who was always willing to be forgiving and always willing to try to build you back up again. He was a generous person. And in the gospel today, we have the only scene that I know of in the gospel of the last judgment. And what are we being judged on? How do we live that word? How do we feed the hungry? How do we care for those in need? How do we visit those who are sick? How do we reach out to other people? Or put it very suddenly, how do we take the love that God has implanted in our heart and share it and give it away? Your Father is definitely on the right side of this gathering in heaven because he did exactly what the Lord asked him to do. Many times around this parish, there were things that broke. In those days, a lot of things broke. We had no money. And your father was always there. Father, we can do this. Father, we can help. You know, and I remember, especially when working on the parking lot, it wasn't uncommon for the grader of the truck to break down. It didn't stop him at all. He did what he had to do to fix it. And he continued doing the work of God. That's what happens to us as well. As we live this life that we received in baptism, we frequently break down. And we frequently go the wrong direction. But as your father did, we do what we have to do to get back on the right track again. No matter how painful that may be. So definitely, if you take the word of God as he did to heart and to live that word, then you can grow more intimate in your relationship with the Lord Jesus. That's what the readings of the Mass on Thursday after Ash Wednesday was about. About emptying ourselves completely and giving ourselves totally to the Lord and becoming one with him. And today in the Mass this morning, the prophet Isaiah tells us when we do that, when we give completely of ourselves and make all the sacrifices that the Christian life demands of us, there's a tremendous reward. The more we give, even if it hurts, the more God gives back to us. There is no limit to his love. And you were lucky that are this dead of family to have an example in both your parents of people who were giving tremendously. How well do I remember many times going over to the house and your mother's beans and rice and homemade tortillas. I can't tell you how many of those tortillas that I ate, but I know I gained a few pounds when I was here. That's the love. But not only to me, the people she knew, but your father and your mother looked after those who they did not know. They cared for people. And that's what the Word of God says we are to do today. So if we want to be counted with the righteous, then we need to take an examine of ourselves and see how we're living that Word that God implanted in our hearts. How we take the Word we hear from the Mass on Sunday to heart and how we put that Word into action. Words on a page don't do it, but words in our heart become action. And that's what gains us eternal life. Because we don't, as you heard in the gospel today, for us, they will not be happy. But to live the life that God gave us is the only way to turn to earn salvation. So today as we give God thanks for the life of your father, who made it back here be part of that life. We also give thanks to God for the graces that he bestowed upon him and on us. Because when he received in his baptism, you and I also received in our baptism. The graces that God gives to him are graces God also gives to us. If we can become examples of living the word of God, really taking that word to heart, we also will we end up with the righteous in heaven and earn for ourselves eternal life. 
as Bishop Carmody always says, when somebody dies, if they die with Christ, they know that your father died, and they have no idea where before you died. If you die with Christ, you're with Christ. And wherever Christ is, there you are. I can imagine the great reunion of father and mother. And most of those people that I mentioned earlier are there as well. Being one with God, celebrating the life that God gave to them. So may we learn from him. And may we take the example that he set for us to heart and live our lives according to that word. Put that word into action. And Lent is an excellent time for us to begin to turn away from our evil ways, our sinful ways. And every one of us, every one of us are sinners. And if every one of us has things that we need to turn away from to take up the love that God has for us. And so that we empty ourselves completely. So the day that our body is in a casket like Zedagosis is, someone will say to us, look, they live their lives according to that word. That's our goal. To become one with Christ and to live our lives the way he wants us to live our lives. <laughs> God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. So with confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Zedagosa, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Zedagosa, that they may be consoled in their grief for the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend, Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
day that we pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifice your hands for the praise and the glory of the church. Be here, O Lord, we pray to your servant, Zedekosa. For this funeral day, we offer you this sacrifice and conciliation. So that should any state of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere. Give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling has been ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> similar way was supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said to us, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and uh, Edmund, and Renee, and 
all the clergy, remember your servant son, Telemundo, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs>
Grant we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Dedagosa, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and free from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before I do the final prayers, one of the things that was important to both Dedagosa and me was the education of their children. And the family has asked that in lieu of flowers, that you would make a donation uh, to St. Anthony School who passes here today and he's very teaching there. And so I just want to bring that to your memory as well. Father, well, may I pray for you? On behalf of the general family, my uncle Eli, my dear Valentina in Houston, my dear Jose Armando in Puerto Rico, all my cousins. Thank you. Um, I'd like to also thank Father Jerry for being here, Father Constantine's wife, Father Jerry's wife. Thank you for coming to anoint my father. Father um, James, the pastor of the parish, could not come today. He, he was caring for his own mother. And um, so we, we sent him our prayers. He also my father in his last days and my uncle. So I, I am confident that um, that he is at peace, that he is um, on his way, at the very least, on his way to the blessed uh, disposition of our Lord and Savior. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank the sisters uh, from uh, St. Anthony for being here, the, uh, the Society of Our Lady of the Holy Trinity. The donations uh, are available on the uh, Maxwell to be done uh, website, and I'll, I'll send that out on Facebook. So, or uh, I'll send that out again, and, and all of the uh, videos. Uh, that uh, anyway, thank you, thank you, everyone. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Zedagosa, and now we can come to our last farewell. And there is sadness and mourning, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. And although this congregation will disperse their sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again to the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith.
Oh no! What? I, there's somebody that it, I didn't get in, but I hope too late now. Yeah, it's too late now. Well, just in in will end it right here, and then that's where you're going to give the option to save. Go ahead. Uh, and in for all. In for all. 